Steve Malloy joins us now. He is a senior ENDE Institute legal fellow and a former Trump EPA team member as well. Steve, good to have you with us, sir. Hey, Vince, thanks for having me back. Uh, it turns out you need an internal combustion engine when things get a little chilly. <laughs> yeah, and of course, everybody, everybody knows this. You know, in extreme uh, weather conditions, EVs just fail. Um, you know, they require a lot of power, especially in the winter. You know, they require uh, power to keep their batteries warm overnight. So they're continually draining. Yeah. Uh, in, in, you know, very, very cold weather, like it's hard to charge them. It's hard to drive. It's just, you know, they're a nightmare. They're, they're sort of, you know, like, like all green technology, you know, when everything is, when conditions are perfect, they work okay, even though you paid too much for them. But when the chips are down, you really need fossil fuels. Yeah, big time. Yet the Biden administration and all of their allies around the globe have been trying to push all of this technology down our throats and saying we have no choice but to move to it, Steve. Uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, two years ago, Congress passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which is forcing us to spend, um, you know, almost $400 billion subsidizing all this green stuff, yeah. which is failing. You know, they're, they're, they're forcing EVs. EVs are a disaster for everybody, not just purchasers, but for the companies that make them. In November, Ford was losing $60,000 per EV sold. Uh, General Motors has tried to bail out of uh, out of the EV market. I mean, it's just they're they're not working out for anybody um you know the the our parking garages are not, are not ready for them they catch on fire in norway where they've had electric buses those have all failed in oslo once again because of the temperature i mean it, it, you know this technology it's i guess it can be kind of fun to play with and yes. you know on a perfect day you can go zero to 60 and nothing flat but you know for most of us the way we live our lives they just don't work, yet Biden is jamming it down our throats. Right, yeah, I like every so often I like a golf cart on a sunny day, but I prefer my <laughs> heated vehicle when it's freezing outside. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and the technology is not going to get any better anytime soon. And, and the thing that you know, really sort of gets me is that every EV makes us more dependent on communist China. You, know, you cannot build an EV battery right. without communist China, because that's where all the processed graphite, which is a lot of the weight of the EV battery, it all comes from China. And so we're, we're you know, people, consumers are paying more for these cars, which are really inferior to internal combustion engine powered cars. They're making us more dependent on China. It's not improving your life. It's not improving the environment. It's not, you know, changing the weather or affecting global warming or climate change in any way. It's just, it, it's, it's a ridiculous uh, thing to buy for any reason other than going, you know, uh, zero to 60 in two seconds or whatever. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I, I want to get to uh, kind of the globalists and their role in all of this in, in just a moment. But first, I, I know that you are a signatory on a letter this week to the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, about uh, essentially stopping the demented green agenda before it hurts too many yeah. people. Tell us what that is about. Yeah, so a, a group of uh, you know my fellow uh, climate skeptics at the Heartland Institute, Envar Energy and Environment Legal Institute, American Energy Institute, um, Committee for Construction Tomorrow, we got to, we sent the Speaker of the House a letter, you know, sort of summarizing 2023 and where the green agenda is. And of course, we sent along our new report uh, called uh, "Wrong Again: The 2023 Edition," where we you know exposed the hottest lying ever and all the climate lies from last year. But you know, most importantly, we point out how to, you know, the entire green agenda is really failing. Um, you know, net zero, electric vehicles, offshore wind, ESG investing, all these things have gone south um, since, you know, the Greens have offered them up. Um, none of this is working out. Net zero is not possible. Offshore wind, you know, is killing whales, makes pointlessly expensive electricity. And a lot of the projects now are just failing because of all the inflation and supply chain problems. Uh, ESG is really taking a hit. Now, BlackRock, which is the leader in ESG investing, has basically cleaned out his entire ESG department. It's been such a fail. Um, so, you know, we just want to remind the speaker that this whole agenda is falling apart. As, as you know, Vince, uh, Republicans can go awfully wobbly on green issues because it's not something they really pay attention to, really understand. Uh, we'd just rather stay stay away from that. But 
uh, you know, in, in this year, especially as an election year, it's very important for Republicans to know what's going on. Yeah. You can get the letter uh, at junkscience.com. Uh, we've got everything with links. You, you, you know, it, it's a pretty good resource. Well, you're right about Republicans. A lot of that is they've ceded, they've either ceded territory or they've sucked up to their donors and they decided to be squishy on these issues. But um, do you get the sense that Speaker Johnson is taking you seriously, that that human flourishing is on the line, human life is on the line here? Well, it's kind of hard to tell just between, you know, you mean listeners. Um, you know, these issues haven't really come up yet uh, this year. I mean, he's got, you know, he's he's swamped with these spending bills. Um, you know, I, we think that he ought to be uh, going after the money in the Inflation Reduction Act. You know, that $400 billion, a lot of it has not been spent. Most of it has not been spent. Uh, that, that needs to be clawed back. I don't know that it's going to happen this year. Um, maybe if Republicans have a strong showing in November, get the White House, Senate, and House, we can start clawing some of that back. All right. Let's uh, let's talk about the globalists now. Uh, and meanwhile, in Davos, Switzerland this week, uh, they're all <laughs> assembling to once again talk about how they can rob each of us of our liberty and power and ability to even move our freedom of movement uh, in order to empower them. What are you detecting out of this meeting this year? Well, it's it's nothing really new. I mean, it's just the annual globalist climate clown show. You know, everyone, they fly in their private jets, uh, you know, demonstrating their climate hypocrisy. They go there, they say the same thing every year. I guess what's news this year is John Kerry is uh, leaving the Biden administration so that he can uh, campaign for Biden on climate, which, come on, <laughs> who yeah, yeah. John Kerry campaign for that? <laughs> and then Al Gore you know, he's abandoned, abandoned uh, making predictions that, you know, we can actually test because all of his have failed. Now he's saying, well, you know, if we get to net zero, it'll just take a couple of years for temperatures to stop rising. Of course, none of this, this will never happen, right? It's impossible to get to net zero. Billions of us would die if we got to net zero, stopped rising. So uh, I haven't really seen anything too interesting yet. It's, it's just really the standard hypocrisy of private jets and hot air from folks like Al Gore and yeah. John Kerry. But I mean, well, that, it gives away know, the that, game, that, doesn't that, it? I mean, if you were if you were sincere about this, if you actually believed it, you would do this over Zoom. You wouldn't actually, you know, go go and meet in well, Switzerland, well, private jets included. Well, right. I mean, if they were really serious about it, they would have uh, done a lot of different things decades ago. And, you know, Al Gore wouldn't be buying uh, Oceanside property in California. Barack yeah. Obama wouldn't be buying, you know, oceanfront property and Martha's Vineyard, you know, a lot of people and do Hawaii. different things. Uh, if, if sea level was really rising, real estate in Miami wouldn't be skyrocketed. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, you know, bullshit, you know, going on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No question. Hey, uh, let's, uh, I'm going to play some audio of, of John Kerry, just to remember John Kerry, as, as uh, Steve Malloy just pointed out, uh, just left the Biden administration to spend more time with his private jet. And here's what he um, said he was tracked down by a reporter at the World Economic Forum this week. What's the carbon footprint of these events every single year that you come here? You think it's worth it? Now, I'll add some color here. John Kerry is, is trying to walk away from this guy, and he's got a lady handler who keeps on shoving the reporter away. Let's pay for your crimes? That's a stupid question. Is it, a, is it really? Is it, is, it, is it more stupid than you traveling here to tell us... Please, I'm, sorry. We're done. We're done. We are done now. And they keep shoving him away. Uh, more from this reporter from Rebel News. Why do you think you're more important? Your carbon footprint doesn't matter, but everybody else around the world suggested that. Nobody ever suggested that. Don't make up stupid questions. Well, he didn't actually make that up, did he, Steve Molloy? Because at one point, John Kerry did actually say that his travel was more important than the rest of ours. <laughs> That's absolutely right, Vince. John Kerry did, in fact, say that he was more important than the rest of us, and he needed to travel to save the planet. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but what do you look when you when you corner these guys? They always lie. It's all John Kerry knows how to do. Same with Al Gore, Joe Biden. Yeah, that's the, they they default to that as their tactic, uh, and and yet they're there uh, doing that. I I do think that this meeting, as as goofy as they are, as cartoonish as all of these people are. Um, it is meaningful insofar as like they, they do have genuine power in, in their respective countries and are advancing a, a deeply evil anti-human agenda, Steve Moy. Oh, absolutely. Well, these these are the elites, uh, you know, lots of CEOs, 
uh, heads of universities, governments. They love to go. You know, they got Zelensky. Uh, usually they get Biden. Um, you know, lo- lots of the elites and, and, they, and Bill Gates. Uh, and they do have ideas for what they want to do in the future. And none of it is very democratic, has anything to do with freedom, or is good for the rest of us. They, you know, it, it, it's, it's the problem when you have, you know, it's group thing, right? They all get in the same room uh, or the same ski slope and engage in group think, mm-hmm. and all they can think about is how to manage us. And, of course, you know that's going to be a failure, and it's going to be a failure. If you've ever read, you know, Hayek's uh, Road to Serfdom, that's what group think produces. Yeah, it certainly does. Lastly, I want to ask you about a, a series of New York Times headlines. Perhaps you've seen them in the, just in the last two weeks. Uh, on January 2nd, the New York Times uh, was predicting what they referred to as, in the headline, the end of snow. On January 10th, they wrote, climate change is driving a sharp drop in snow levels, study finds. And then on January 12th, they wrote, how can a warming climate increase snowfall? So uh, what's that about? Why is well, the New York yeah. Times telling us yeah. snow is disappearing and and increasing? Well, well, so this is the thing. Um, you know, none of their predictions ever turn out. And when their predictions turn out wrong, then they say the exact opposite. So it was always, <laughs> you know, global warming is going to disappear snow. Well, of course, that's never happened. But, yeah. you know, they, they keep coming out with these headlines. New York Times in 2014 had uh, – they wrote – they had an op-ed. It was called the, the End of Snow Question Mark. And then earlier this year, as you pointed out, it was the end of snow period. <laughs> and then, of course – of course, of course, it had been snowing all fall. You know, bef- um, the World, World Cup ski races, which um, now start in October instead of January, they were actually snowed out. There's yeah. too much snow. And, but the New York Times doesn't care. I mean, they, you know, their, their readers get into this climate bubble, and uh, they'll just believe anything that the Times writes, I guess. But, right. I mean, it's so easy to knock down. I do it every day, Ben. Yeah, no, it's so funny though. It's like they 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 don't care. They just they're putting like every possible headline up and hoping something sticks. It's like if you are a climate panic person, there's a choose your own adventure headline available at the New York Times for you. Uh, at yeah. any rate, Steve Malloy, thank you as always with the Energy and Environment Legal Institute. Really appreciate your time today, sir.